So today, I mean, like I said, there's so many things I could have I really, really tapped into in the Word. And I said, Lord, do you just make it easy? And so finally, I, I believe this is the Word of the Lord. I want you to love me. <laughs> love me, please. No, it's a good word. All right, so in Judges chapter 4, 1 through 4, I'm going to talk about Deborah. I'm going to talk about Jael. I'm going to talk about just the call of God on women's lives. But remember, God is calling men as well, all right? So in Judges chapter 4, 1 through 4 in the Living Version, it says, After Ehud's death, the people of God sinned against the Lord. So the Lord let them be conquered by King uh, Jabin of Hazar in Canaan. The commander-in-chief of his army was Sisera, who lived in wherever. He had 900 iron chariots and, and made life unbearable for the Israelis for 20 years. But finally, they begged the Lord for help. Israel leader at that time, the one, was responsible for bringing the people back to God was Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth. Did you hear that? The one who was responsible for bringing the people back to God was Deborah. Listen, ladies, God is calling us to be the Deborahs. He's calling us to be the Esthers. He's calling us to rise up. We, and, and again, this is not a non, it's a non-gender. But God is speaking to us because there's, there's that birthing process that's within all of us. We are spiritual birthers. We birth in the natural, but we birth spiritually. And so God is saying, I'm calling you. The women of God, they've been, you know, uh, King Jabin, when you look up his name, it means intellect. And so, see, we're, we're going to get out of the intellect, this cunning, this thing mentally that tries to drive us. See, God is a spirit. It's not going to make sense. However, he tells us to, to break through and whatever his plans are and how he tells us to, to war and how he tells us to pray. We can't go through the intellect, intellectual mindset. And it says here that, that there were 900 chariots of iron. Now, these, the war, they were warring against men that didn't have any of that. They were on foot. So it's like, like today. It just seems like there's 900 chariots of armor, uh, iron out there, and it seems like it's an impossibility. But I'm telling you today that with God, nothing's impossible, and it takes prayer power that brings shift. The 900 chariots of armor, of, well, armor or iron, you know, in the natural, looked like they were going to be defeated, looked like they were going to get their behinds kicked. But I'm going to tell you right now, God had a plan. And so... Let me just say this about Deborah, the prophetess. I'm going to get this out of my way here. When, um, you know, I'm convinced that, that in, our, in the church at large, we'll never fully represent Jesus, nor its full impact until every woman is fully received as a true partner in the kingdom ministry, according to her God-given design. We women are made in God's image. We're, God in his image is male and female, Right? And so women are just as valuable and important as men. And so this isn't a woman against a man thing, but women, you have to know who, you're call, who, you're, who you are in the Lord. You're not less than. You're not less than a man. And so when God said, let us make man or women in our image, he, you know, they made man, and then they fashioned woman, and they rearranged this heavenly DNA that they imparted to Adam separating characteristics. So leaving Adam with his masculine self, moving in and, and Eve with her feminine thing. And so Adam, he had like more of a decisiveness. He's stronger. Listen, ladies, I'm not going to compete with a man. Men are stronger. They have more upper body strength, right? And so the, the desire for invention, you know, adventure, you know, they had uh, concrete thinking, you know, they're more analytical. They more think things through. You know, women, you know, we, are, have, we have that ability to nurture, you know, and, and mul we can multitask, right? We can do a lot of things at a time, men where men can't. And so there's softness. We have a fashion sense that most men don't. So anyway, so God was no longer, like God created men and women to unite together, all right? So in order for us to really flow in the power, and this isn't just the only thing, men and women need to work together. I have traveled the country, I have traveled the world, and still women are not honored. When I'm with my husband, I'm treated different. When I'm not with my husband, I'm treated different, and not in a great way. That shouldn't be, and that's in the church. 
I'm not talking in the Middle East out in the fields over there. I'm talking in the church, all right? Women were never meant to just be in, in children's ministry. Women were never meant to just play the organ, okay, or the piano. That's not who God has called us to be. It didn't, this didn't change. This particular issue didn't change until the prophetess came on the scene. Now, again, we need the men. I, I, I defer to my husband. He flows in wisdom that at times I'm not flowing in and vice versa. I honor and respect him. He honors and respects me. We work together in tandem, you see? So anyway, so that's really important that we understand women aren't less than. When we first started a church and I was preaching one Sunday, some man got up and walked out. And I, I'll tell you the truth. I thought, yeah, there's a door. Keep going. So <laughs> women are called... We are. We're called to, to be aligned and to be a par. I'm sorry. I just, I just, I'm not taking it. <laughs> What's that movie? I'm mad as, and I'm not taking it anymore. <laughs> All right. I won't say that here. All right. So anyway, so um, anyway, so if we get back to judges here, um, we see that they were having a problem. And in verse three, it says, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord for Jabin had 900 chariots of armor. And for his 20 years, he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now, verse four says, now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth was judging Israel at the time. And she sat under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel. So it was a place that Ramah can represent idolatry. Bethel, you know, can represent the house of God. In the mountains, and the children came up to her for her judgment. So she had wisdom. They saw that. And so, um, so anyway, so there was a lot of, there was warring going on. And Barak, and I'm going to just cut to the chase because I see the time. Barak, you know, there was, he was one of the other captains, you know, didn't want to go to war without her. And, you know, they both need, in other words, that's saying to me that, 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 we need each other to war together. We need each other for breakthrough. We need each other for healing. We need each other for restoration, all right? And so, but I'm going to pause here because um, it wasn't until, like, when you read through verse 5. Well, actually, I'll go there now. Uh, Judges chapter 5. When you read through it, it's called the Song of Deborah. And um, she and, and, and you know, uh, Jael, Jael, who was a regular housewife, Jael, um, I guess they were in relationship because Sisera was the king who was who oversaw the, the warring with the 900 chariots of, of uh, iron. And, and, and Sisera ran from the Israelites because they were getting destroyed. They, they, the spirit of the Lord showed up because the people were crying out. They listened to the direction of the prophet. And now Sisera is running. So he runs to her tent and he runs and, and she sees him. But she now is aligned with Deborah. She gets the word of the Lord, and she's like, I'm going to take you out. And let me tell you something. When Sisera came in, he said to her, you know, let, listen, you know, hide me. You know, she, her husband must have been in relationship or whatever. But she gave him a milk, and, and she covered him, and she put the, the guy went to sleep. But she took that tent peg, yeah. and that tent peg, she put it, and the Bible literally says she smote it through his temple. And, and what we have to understand is we have to smote the enemy's lies with that tent peg. We have to smote the enemy's lies where he lies to so many of us. Even some of you here today may think, oh, Lord, I can't believe I'm here today. My mother or my aunt or my father made me come. Listen, God's going to shake you up. Because it's either, you know, there's good and evil in this land. And there's a spirit realm, and it's good or bad. And so God is shaking everything that needs to be shaken, and he's waking us all up. But anyway, so she smote him. And when you look up that word smote, it literally it can mean clap your hand. That's why clapping and worshiping is so important. That's another definition of it. She, she did clap your hand, but she smote the enemy. She said, enough of your lies, enough of your trash talking that you tell me that I can't be the woman of God that God called me to be. I can't flow in what God has for me. Enough of your lies. So then it goes on. So Deborah now is singing this song. And it says, when, then Deborah in chapter 5 of 1 and Barak, the son of Abimanoah, sang on that day, saying, When leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, God of Israel. Now I'm going to jump down. It says here in verse 6, and this, this really 
It was interesting. Verse 6 says, In the day of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted. The, it, you know, I'll read it in the Amplified. It says, The caravan ceased. COVID caused life to cease. Everyone was isolated. The travelers walked along the byways. Verse 7 says, Village life ceased. It ceased in Israel until I, Deborah, arose above a mother in Israel. Village life ceased. Our lives have ceased for a year. And it's like, whoa, Lord, Jesus, I get the COVID thing. I think some of it's a little exaggerated. But anyhow, I won't go there. And so it says village life ceased. The warriors that were called to rise up ceased. Village life ceased. It, they weren't performing. They didn't arise. Literally, that word, when you look it up, it means to become idle or flabby. Okay? It, it, became, it, it ceased. There was a strategic plan of the enemy to shut everyone down and cut you off and to cause fear, to cause pandemic, to cause whatever it wants to cause. But the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. I'm building my people up. They're going to spiritually weightlift again. They're getting back in shape. They're getting back in shape. When Uni was holding my arm, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I should have done more, more tricep. <laughs> she, she kept holding my arm like, oh, dear God, I should have done more tricep uh, moves, you know. So God is getting us back in spiritual shape. He's, he's calling us. He's saying, listen, village life may have ceased, but not anymore. Not anymore. It's not going to look like it was. It's not going to ever be normal, like what we think normal, but it's going to be a flourishing time. It's not going to be without war, but it's going to be a powerful time, okay? And so, now with that, when, when I was meditating on it, really, if you, if you really look in the commentaries, they, they do lead you these scriptures. So, I went with it. So, Isaiah 32, 9, this is my word to all of us, but to the women, okay? Um, Isaiah 32, 9 in the NIV says, You women who are so complacent, rise up and listen to me, you daughters who feel secure. Hear what I have to say. And another version says, Pay attention. I have something to say. Dark days are ahead and we must prepare. God is calling the women to rise up. Why? Not just women, but women have that, that birthing powerful breaker anointing in us to pray. So do men, because we need men and women praying. But, but he's saying, Come on, the things that look so normal, the things that look like, you know, status quo, don't worry about it, things will change. Uh-uh, God needs all of us. God needs us praying. And I was listening to a minister, Kynan Bridges, I think is his name, and he was sharing a dream he had. And this dream stuck out at me, and he said he was dreaming. And in the dream, people were on the beach sunbathing, and everybody was just having a wonderful time. And he's like watching in his dream. And he thought, Lord, what are you showing me? And all of a sudden he realized we were on Normandy Beach. God is saying, wake up. God is saying, Lord, I, awaken my spirit, man. Listen, this isn't about fear, but it's about not complacency, not being so distracted, not being so focused on other things that we're not hearing the voice of the Lord. And, uh, and I said, Lord, I'm just asking you to make us all alert that we recognize your, your voice. We recognize when you're giving us direction. Amen? And so in verse 32, I'm sorry, Isaiah 32, 15 in the New Living says, until at last, all right, here's, here's the deal. I didn't feel like reading the whole thing. So Isaiah 32, 9 says, you know, wake up you women who are complacent, rise up and listen to me, okay? This isn't an insult. This is just God saying, we, we, he's stirring all of us to wake up. And then he says, so when we do this, Verse 15 says, until at last the spirit is poured out from us on high from heaven, then the wilderness will become a fertile field and a fertile field will yield bountiful crops. So, so Isaiah was challenging the women to take heed because listen, there's misplaced priorities, but he also knew what we have in us to accomplish this. Listen, the wilderness will become a fertile field and the fertile field will be yield bountiful crops. So we're, we are going to start um, uh, training on prayer. And listen, I know you all pray. I'm not in, trying to insult anybody. But it's always good to revisit things, right? We have to learn how to tarry and wait before the Lord, wait and sing in, in, in the spirit of the Lord. Listen, God's not on our time clock. You know, oh, Lord, could you get it done in an hour? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we can. 
and he will at times, but there's just times that you're just waiting. I kid you not, yesterday, I must have been upstairs just in my office for hours, six hours. I was just trying to get, you think, what's so hard about getting to work? I, I just, I was just waiting, you know, trying to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so, do I always like doing that? I don't like it. My flesh doesn't like it. My flesh wars against this. So, please, I'm not, you know, oh, here, listen to Trisha. She walks on water. I haven't walked on water yet. But, but you know, I, 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 you know, it's my flesh wars against this, too. I don't always want, when I get up in the morning, I mean, I do. I, I go right into, I, I've conditioned myself to go right to pray. But I don't always want to. I don't feel like worshiping. And then I just speak to my flesh and tell it to knock it off. And then you start doing it, right? I mean, it happens to us all. So Proverbs um, 31, I'm, I'm sorry, Proverbs 1, 32 and 33 in the NIV says, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Isn't that awesome? Listen, God, when he challenges us with something, isn't to insult us or hurt us. It's to encourage us. Amen? So why? Because God gave us influence. He knows women are birthers. Listen, have you ever seen a mama, like a mama bear? Or, or, or forget a mama bear. What about us mamas? If anyone messes with our kids, you are dead meat. Do not come near our children. Right? Even though we can smack them, but don't you come near them. Right? So... You know, there's that, that warring aspect. We have a, a video clip that we would always show of this uh, bear, of a, a lion that was going, or a tiger or something was going after this baby bear. And, and, and it was, you know, it's very dramatic. And then until the mama comes up, the mama bear, and, and scared it away. Well, that's us. You know, we're not going to tolerate that. But God is like that over our lives, too. He's El Shaddai. The Bible says he's the many-breasted one. You know, I was toiling with the mother heart of God. There's a mother heart. He's a nurturer. He loves us. He's compassionate, but he's a warrior. He, he's that mama bear, too. There's portions of that in the Scripture that wars over us as we're crying out to him. So we're not alone. And God's not disappointed with what you've already done. He's happy with it. He's pleased with us. But he's saying, go deeper. I have so much more. Don't, don't settle for status quo or just enough. Don't settle for that. So God wants us to understand. He knows what he's placed in us. He knows what the ability is, that, that he wants to break us out of any kind of lethargy or any kind of passive spirit. So in Jeremiah 9, 17 through 19, thus says the Lord of hosts, and I'm reading out of the Amplified, it says, consider and call for the mourning women to come. Send for the skillful women to come. What does that mean? Let them make haste and raise a wailing over us for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush with water. For a sound of wailing is heard coming out of Zion, how we are plundered and ruined. So God is, wailing is a high form of intercession. He's calling us to wail. He's calling us to cry out. I was thinking of the Syrophoenician woman. She went to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, my daughter is demonized. And he said, what do I have to do with you right now? It actually seems insulting. But she pressed in. She didn't care. It was before Jesus died on a cross, before he broke through that veil. She pressed through, and her faith caused her to go beyond. She said, listen, I want my daughter delivered, and I'll eat the crumbs. I'll do whatever it takes. That's a form of intercession. That was a form of wailing. She was pressing. We can't just give up and just say, well, whatever will be, will be baloney. That's not who we are. God says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And so we have to pray. What are we trusting God for? What do we believe in? We have issues in our family that needs deliverance and healing. What are we pressing God for? Are we doing our 10-minute thing? Are we waiting on the Lord? Are we turning our TVs off? Are we getting before the Lord in the morning and saying, Lord, I need change. I'm not coming out until something happens, until breakthrough comes. That's what God is calling us to. we got to get out of the, that's that lethargic, passive, complacent mindset. That, I'm telling you what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. And some of you may think, oh, she's so stinking fanatic. Yeah, I am. Yeah, because it causes breakthrough. I have never just, just prayed my three-minute prayer. I have seen God work too many miracles in my life, and it didn't come. It's warfare. It's work. We tarry. Not, now, listen, it's not work for him loving us. He loves us. We don't have to earn love, but there are certain things with our flesh that we have to die to. 
We have got to die to and yield and surrender to Holy Spirit. So wailing is a form of intercession. He's saying, call for the mourning women. Call for the skillful women. The sk when you look up that word, it means wise. The women who fear the Lord, who are more concerned about what God says versus what others are saying. He's, we're more concerned about that. God is calling us. He's saying, listen, the, the, what, do we have, hey, anybody have an impossible situation you're believing God for? Hello? Well, it's going to take breakthrough. It's going to take that kind of anointing. Listen, we have young people. We have the world, the socialist community has really done a number on our kids. Kids going to colleges right now, kids doing their thing. Yeah, we want them to get an education, but they have so twisted their mindsets with this communist socialist mindset that we're going to just take it. No, no, we're taking back what the enemy has stolen. Because listen, these kids are the, the future revivalists. These kids are the ones who are the evangelists and the prophets and, and the teachers that, that are standing up for God. But right now they're looking and they're searching for truth. They're looking and they're searching for something that we truly believe in because they need to see. They want to know the miracle working love of Jesus Christ and power of God. We're it. We're it. He's saying, call for the wailing women. Come and cry out. War on behalf of what you're standing for, your family. Listen, it's got to start in our families first. Before we're going to make breakthrough and happen out around here, God is saying, listen, I'll meet you right where you're at. Don't get all discouraged. Just God say, God, here I am. Help. That's one of the best prayers you can ever pray is help. I don't know what the heck to do, but help me, God. Here's what your word says, but help me, God. That's the mercy and compassion of our God. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name, who heals me of all my diseases and forgives me of all my iniquities, who encircles me with loving kindness. When you look that word up, it means womb. He's a birther. He understands. He gave birth to us, and he wants us to, in, to understand. He's imparting that birthing, anointing onto all of us to have that breaker anointing on every single one of us over every situation that we're standing for I've seen too many miracles many of you can come up here of all the miracles that you have and so like I said well, I've said it before when we were in that restaurant that guy died we prayed over him we commanded that spirit of death to come out he rose from the dead that's in every single one of us and there are spiritually dead here today that God wants to break you out of. There are death wishes some of you have on your lives that you don't care if you live or die. That's going to stop. Jesus is calling you up and out. Listen, the lie of the enemy is, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to have fun. That's the lie. The, you have misery. It's fun for a season. But then you get in that place of confusion. You get in that place of depression and hopelessness. But God is a God of hope. It doesn't mean that you don't have problems, but in the world, I remember when people would minister to me, I thought, oh, brother, here they come again. They're going to talk to me about Jesus. I don't want to hear it. They're corny. They're ridiculous. What do they have to offer me? Meanwhile, of course, I wanted to commit suicide, but meanwhile, you know, that was okay. But I couldn't stand when they came by me. The one girl would always come up to me, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I thought, oh, my God, would she stop? I don't want people thinking I'm with her. You know, I was embarrassed. <laughs> Here I am. Praise the Lord, brother. Anyway, so, but you know what? But God broke through. He broke through. I was, I, I just didn't care if I lived or died. It was just after a while, it's like there's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. Is that all there is? This is what wor the world has to offer? You know? And so, God, I'm telling you, for those of you who are not sold out to Jesus yet, give him a chance. Give him a chance. Stop running. God is after you anyhow. He's after you anyhow. You're not going to get away from him. But God has called us to be watchmen. And I'm going to close. So it says we're watchmen for our family. That's what the wailing. We're wailing. We're crying out on God. Call out unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not of. Hey, you may be getting high right now and thinking, well, that's what I'm into. Listen, it's fun for a season. Been there, done all that. doesn't work. It's for a season until it has you. And then you lose all your money. We are instrument of God's... Um, of war. God wants you to stop. He's saying, listen, I have something so much better for you. So much better for you. 
You know, he wants a restoration of all things. So listen, God is after us. I love this. In Isaiah 42, 13 and 15, it says, The Lord will go forth like a mighty man. He will rouse up his zealous indignation and vengeance like a warrior. He will cry, yes. He will shout aloud. He will do mightily against his enemies, our enemies. Thus says the Lord, I have for a long time held my peace. He's held his peace, Lord, a little too long, anyway. But I've been still and restrained myself, and now I will cry out like a woman in travail, and I will gasp and pant together. We are birthers, I'm telling you. You know, how many times, like, for those of us who had children, when you're in the middle of giving birth, you want to smack everybody around you. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's like you're in that transition, and you're pushing, and you're pushing. I wanted my husband to punch the doctor in the face because he was aggravating me, you know? I'm like, because well, he said my son was dead. And I'm like, punch him in the face, you know? You're in that place of transition, and you're pushing, and you're pushing, and you're pushing. And how many times when you're in that place, you want them to give up and say, why? Oh, my God, I can't believe I want this to stop because the pain is so much. But we're in that place of transition right now. We are panting. We are travailing. And it seems like, remember when uh, Abraham and Sarah blew it? They, 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 you know, God had promised them that they were going to have a son. But in that period of waiting I hate that period of waiting but we all wait right in that period of waiting they called in Ishmael they had Hagar become the the birther for them when God didn't say that so I'm in here to encourage you God is not forsaking your prayers in this place of panting and birthing and you know in that travailing place don't give up don't look back don't think that God hasn't heard your prayer because that baby is coming forth. The baby of victory, the baby of breakthrough, the baby of your prodigals coming home, the baby of your finances being restored or, or alcoholics being healed, drug addicts, sickness being overturned. That's what God is asking us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. So lastly, we are virtuous women. And I'm going to close with this because I want you to get a picture of who you are. When it says here in Psalms 31:10, who can find a virtuous woman? Her worth is far above rubies. Can't even pay for her. We're so much value. We have so much value. That word virtuous, and I'm sure you've heard this before, means valor, host, army, forces, strength, riches, power, ability, efficiency, might, okay? And then the root word of that is kail, C-H-A-Y-I-L. It means to dance, to writhe, to twist. It's, it kind of reminded me of being in birth, right? It made to, to uh, bring forth, you know, to wait longingly, to, to press through. Now, that isn't some little flowery word. That's how he said, who can find a virtuous woman? And ladies, why don't you stand up? Let's all stand up. That's who we all are. We're not this little pansy that sits in the back, you know, and, and just, you know, has no say, no voice. We're in a decade of pay. God has given us a voice. He's given us all a voice, but to speak the word of the Lord, not murmur, not complain, not call names, but to be the women of God that God has called us to be. And that's who we are. My mother-in-law, Peter talks a lot about her. She, she was always really sweet, very kind, very quiet, but don't mess with her. She, there was a meekness with her that when she said no, it was no. And when she took a stand for something, she wasn't backing down. When she prayed, she prayed, and she prayed through. I always admired that about her. So when, when I, even these definitions that I'm giving you, it doesn't mean that now you have to be like William Wallace and, you know, paint your face blue and, you know, go and scream. And, but it's that kind, it's that, that spiritual personality, that countenance that you take, like, don't mess with me, devil, because I will smack you down if you don't stop it, you know? And But it's like that. After a while, those who are insulting you, those who are mistreating you, abuse is not in our category here. If there's abuse, <laughs> it's spirit of smack now I'm going to get. But if there is abuse, you need to get out. We don't tolerate abuse. But God is saying, women, I've called you to be powerful women of God. I've called you to know who you are. I've called you to love yourself and honor yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. Be powerful. Be that army that God has called you to be. Be that one that cries out. So what I, I believe here God is doing is he's stirring us all up. He wants us this awakening to take place. He's shifting 
all of us to be the warriors that God has called us to be, men and women. And if we're going to have an atmosphere in our home, in our place of business, in, our, in the churches, we, we've got to be on our faces before the Lord. We've got to wait and, or surrender before him. We've got to just wait to hear the revelation and the wisdom of our God for breakthrough, for, for this awakening, for this revival. Like Zechariah 4 and 1 says, the angel came and awakened me. Well, the angels of the Lord are awakening. God is saying, stop living with status quo. Believe for miracle working power. Believe for signs and wonders. Lay hands on the sick. Believe for awakening in your home. Believe for your own personal revival. Acts chapter 3 says that times of refreshing are here. This is for us. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you for the winds of your presence. <clears throat> I thank you that we can prophesy to them dry, dead bones. We can prophesy to dry there means confusion. It means to be ashamed. See, God wants to break you out of your shame and your confusion and your disappointments. Lord, I just thank you for the, the presence of God that breaks through, that causes us to come out of that place of lethargy. Lord, I just thank you that you love us so much that you're shaking us up and you will not allow us to stay where we're at. God, I just thank you, Father, for your amazing love, your unfailing love that you have for each and every one of us. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the stirring. I just thank you that you are releasing a mantle of prayer on this house, on each individual, that, Lord, we can't go all in a, a day without spending time with you, without crying out to you, without worshiping. God, as that deer pants for the water brook, so my soul longeth after thee. We are that one that's panting hard, panting hard after you. We don't want status quo, oh God. So Lord, I just thank you. We just release your anointing. We release the blessing of the Lord. And let me just say this. If there's anyone here that wants to rededicate your lives, we would love to pray with you today. I know it's Mother's Day, but you know what? The devil doesn't care. He'll still try to mess with you. So um, we're, we're happy to pray with you. But if you're here and you want to rededicate your life, I'd love for you to come up and we'll pray with you. But Lord, I just stand for the women. And Lord, I thank you, Father. You're breaking shame. You're breaking the chains of shame. You're breaking the chains of disappointment. You're breaking off the chains of, 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 of just having a hard heart because of so much hurt. Lord, I thank you that you're stirring us up. You're giving us that desire to break through. Lord, I just break off that religious spirit that has tried to hold so many back. We say no to you in Jesus' name. And we loose, oh God, revival. We loose that awakening. We loose, oh God, people who know their God and shall do great exploits. This is for each and every one of us, oh God. And Lord, I just thank you for your brooding presence. I thank you for fruitfulness that you're causing us to birth, to birth the new, to not tolerate, to be like that Syrophoenician woman that wouldn't accept no and, and, for, and you know, for deliverance for her daughter. Lord, I thank you. Ooh, I just feel the presence of the Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Can you just thank him? Can you just thank him for his goodness? Thank him for, for what he's doing in our lives. Thank him for, for how he wants us to be stirred up how he wants us to be panting for him, how he wants us to want him more than we want anything else and to get rid of our idols. He wants us to, get, to want him because idolatry, TV, sex, drugs, none of that does anything for us unless we put him first. All that other stuff needs to fall by the wayside because it's deception. The Lord wants us to pant after him. I'm telling you, this young generation that's been so swayed, and so deterred, Lord, I, it's going to take the wailing women to call them back, to, to, to call that revival in, to cause that stirring to take place. No, I'm not fanatical. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And the Lord wants to set you free. So, Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. And again, I give you opportunity to come up if any of you need prayer. But Lord, I just thank you, Father, for your amazing love that you have for each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the ability as women, as mamas, to war. You've given us the ability to discern and to see in the realm of the spirit. You've given us the ability to dream, to hear your voice, and to know the path and to know which way to walk in. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us that ability. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the stirring. 
I thank you that everyone here is here on purpose. I thank you, Lord, for the men and women that have received this prayer mantle. And we say, let God arise and our enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I bless each and every one here. I thank you, ladies, that we are the army of God, as are the men. But, Lord, I just thank you for this commissioning today to rise up in a new way, to rise up with that fierce, warlike, lion-like mantle of God upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Holly.